Let's talk herd. I really resonate with that way of thinking. And it does take a bit of practice at first, doesn't it? I think we've got this resistance to... Oh, absolutely. And it's, yeah. <laughs> and it's a consistent routine discipline. So if you've been disciplined in dressage, you can do this with your thoughts. Too. <laughs> so you just have to remind yourself. I tell horse people all the time, like who think that they're not good enough or that they don't do enough. And I'm like, you guys, you own horses. That is a huge mm. plus in my book. That means you are disciplined. You show up, you take care of them. Yeah. So why don't you take care of yourself as well as you take care of your horse? Yeah. You can do it. It's just a matter of shifting your perspective, you know, and that includes, you know, focusing on what your body needs, what your thoughts need, all that. Yeah. Do you think there's an extra diamond? Like there's a something about maybe it's the eagle, but because sometimes you talk to people about this. I mean, I talk to people about this sometimes and I'm, I, you know, it's like I want to encourage that, like, wow, you know, that you can really like create your own world and it's amazing. And but, you know, but they don't necessarily always want to hear that. And it's it's almost like a responsibility then. It's scary. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's scary to own your own power. And that's why, you know. So many societies have religions that tell you you're not allowed to have power. <laughs> so yeah. it's revolutionary to say, I have my own voice and I'm going to trust myself and no one else. And yeah. it scares people. Um, so if you can get into that space and just go, okay, this is for the highest good for myself and all the energy around me, you know, focus yeah. on, on doing all the right things that feel good to you, then I think that's the important thing. Yeah. 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 And yeah, being able to, I call it grab life by the unicorn horn and just <laughs> own your power and do it. It, it, yeah. it makes light of it, but it's also so true. So um, I'm going to share with you something that I wrote in my book as well, but it was very powerful. At 16 years old, I had a dream that I was in a physical education class. We call it gym class here in the U.S. And there was this one long rope and you're supposed to climb it. And it's like torture for people who are not athletic. Yeah. And in my dream, I'm like struggling. I'm just on the end and it's, I'm shaking and I feel horrible and I don't want to be doing this. And mm. it's all the emotions, like the bad ones, right? And then all of a sudden this entity comes up in front of me and, and shows me all these beautiful golden orbs that are floating all around me. And they start to wow. spin. And the energy says, you need to choose one and it'll help you. And I'm actually, I'm looking at it and they're spinning kind of fast and I'm like, and it was actually kind of distracting and annoying me even more. And I'm like, I don't know. And then all of a sudden I realized there was one inside my lower belly. Wow. And I said, I choose the one inside of me. And as soon as I said that in my dream, I'm just like floating up the rope. I get to the top. There's a hole. I get to the rooftop and I'm just stargazing in total bliss and relaxation. Wow. That's incredible. And I woke up and this is when I was 16 years old. This is a long time ago. I'm like, oh. Yeah, this is very impactful. So if you believe in your power and your golden orb inside of you and remind mm. yourself to light it up each day and activate it, your whole world's going to change. Yeah, that's really, yeah, what a lovely, yeah. just such a powerful image as well and a powerful feeling. Yeah, it just makes me happy to remind people of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's so positive. So what would you say is your, like the thing that you find comes up most often with people that's blocking them or holding them back from finding that inner voice or that, that joy within? Um, it's conditioning and it's a lot of um, old programs running. So if you think of your mind as a computer, a lot of times when you're little, um, things will happen and you'll attach meaning to it. And then that becomes your reality. And that, and then if you mm. live that your whole life, you know, it's just like, you know, you see horses doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same results, right? So it's a matter of like taking that moment to go, wait a second. Mm. I think I can make a little change here. What if I learn what's been holding me back? And, and you go deep and you find find mm. out 
the old programming and you examine it and then you decide if you want it or not. And if not, you get rid of it. And then you focus on all the things that are going to improve your life. But it's a matter of having that realization of going, you know what? I don't like the way my life is. I don't like the way this trajectory is going. I need to make a change. So usually it happens with a big life moment. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, like I said, I had five surgeries and they were all very impactful and they've shifted my perspective in major ways. So as painful as they were, I'm also grateful for them because now I'm able to teach people that no matter what happens in your life, you can still bounce back, you know, and still find ways to make things amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did that come about with you? Was that your knee injury? Okay, so I'll start with the first one was my arm. And that was actually how I started really honoring my intuition. So I, like I mentioned, I was in New York for a while, and then I worked for a trainer in California, and we were retraining racehorses to be good riding horses. And there was one in particular who would buck all the time, and I had fallen off him several times um, mm -hmm. in the past, in the, in the few months I was training him. And I didn't really know much about groundwork. I didn't really know much about connecting. I just knew how to ride really well, and I was knew how to be coachable. So my, the trainer would teach me while I was riding the horse and she would be basically training the horse as I rode and using me kind of okay. like as a guinea pig in a sense, you know. And so one morning, I, I think I was like 20, 21, 22, early 20s, I was getting ready to go to the barn and I'm like putting on my socks and all of a sudden I heard a voice say, you're going to fall off today. Wow. I'm like, that was weird. Okay. And you know, I'd never heard voices before. I never like really tuned in or anything like that. Like I said, I had intuitive dreams every once in a while, but like I just kind of brushed them off. So being in my early 20s and knowing like I have to work for this trainer and this is my job, this is what I do. I just, you know, tacked up the horse, got on, rode, trotting along nonchalantly. Sure enough, he bucks. He was 17 one. I'm only five feet. I went flying through the air, compound fracture right away, had to have surgery. Um. All I can think of is when I woke up in the emergency room, I mean, uh, after surgery, I woke up going, I had a voice tell me and I didn't do a thing. I didn't make any changes. And so that was like my huge aha moment. Like, okay, it's time to listen. So now I tell my students, hey, if there's something going on with you, I can't tell, you tell me. So if there's any yellow lights or red lights, you've got to let me know. And then we've got to dial things back and reassess. Mm -hmm. So it's so important to trust our intuition. Wow. Um, so yeah, that was the first one. And then the others were usually because I was rushing things and not listening to my intuition. Um, I had, the, that was the knee off of Indy. And then yeah. after the knee injury and I had the surgery six months later, I was rushing around in the house and I was like two months away from being able to ride again. So I was starting to get more mobile and I slipped in the house mm. and broke my femur on the same leg as the, oh, the no. knee that had surgery. So now I have a nine inch plate in my leg. Um, so I'm like, I, we joke and call me bionic woman, but <laughs> that was also in, I was in my mind. I wasn't in my heart. I was just rushing around and, and yeah. not thinking and, and not being present. And so that's the mm. other thing is I tell people, slow down, get present, tune in, <sighs> breathe more, you know, find out where you are in time and space. And like, take that moment to just go, okay, I am here. And then that's going to make huge changes. And then once you do that, you're like, oh, you know what? I've been scrolling on social media too long today. Let me just put that down for a minute. <laughs> How do I really feel? You know? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, that keeps it real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And I love that. I love that. I think because of mm. doing the craniosacral, that kind of trains you or yeah, it's like a parameter just to kind of give you the discipline yes. to just sit and be with your body and with your and with the flow, like to know that everything's flowing and moving and and then you can then you can connect that with, you know, other animals and the horses and and it is really that's for me now that's kind of become re the real thing, like the real experience of life and then when I get into like you say like the other stuff like scrolling on 
social media or whatever it's like that just yeah. isn't satisfying it's like not that place of yeah. where you're connected and, and I listened to this because I you know this has fascinated me for a long time all the whole spiritual awakening and everything and being in the present moment and everything and, and I listened to a just like a kind of random video on YouTube yesterday, but it was really interesting what this guy was saying about, and it seems so obvious, but he was talking about being in the in the present moment. And he said, you know, often we're thinking about how we need to be in the present moment and we, we need to be present and we're sort of struggling a bit with that. But what he said, which was so, it was really helpful, was that th we're always in the present moment. You know, even if we're, thinking about the past or thinking about the future we're we're still in the present moment we're just thinking about the past or the future so that I don't know that just like helps because it oh yes just makes you realize that you it is always now it's always now and so then you can just kind of relax yeah and just experience now you know it's not something you're striving to get to because there's nothing else Oh, no. Yes. I think more of it is just yeah. reminding yourself to engage in your present moment. I think that that's probably the nuance to it. Yeah, because if exactly. you're thinking about the past or the future or or just like something weird that's in the back of your mind, it's like not helpful. Um, usually you're holding your breath and you're getting tense. Yeah. And you're so your mind is floated away. Your body is not in in a happy place, right? So if you want to engage in your present moment, yeah. first you got to bring the breath to your body. And then that's that's your soul coming back in, right? And then you you look for something to focus on, like I'm here now. You know, I'm I'm thinking about how exciting it is that I get to meet this beautiful new human and we get to connect mm. across the world. You know, this yeah. is so freaking cool. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I just get so excited about that. And then and then you're, and then you're here, and then it feels so much more, and then you feel your heart expand, right? So that that to me is like being yeah, in the present moment. Of, yeah. You're really engaging, but of course you're always here. I mean, that's that's a beautiful exactly. thing about life. So it's it's like, what degree do you want to be present, <laughs> right? Exactly, and um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think when you really like, I still have this memory of this time, and I I don't really know why it was significant, but I'd just been. I'd been clearing the weeds out of some hay that we cut and I, I was just walking up the field afterwards and I just, oh my God, it was like the most, probably the most present moment. Like I think I've had another one as well when I was just walking out in these reeds in a field. I mean, it was nothing, it wasn't the circumstances, it was just something about the richness of it. It was like, oh my God, you know, this is it, this is you know, it's like a psychedelic experience or something. Like, I'm alive. And, this is so cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's just, you can't describe it in words, really. So, yeah, it is about it is about the engagement. There's just something about, I think, the way that that ego voice or that inauthentic part or just the thoughts, like, they make you think that it's difficult to do that. Yeah. It's difficult to engage and... You know, it's like a, it's going to be a big, long struggle. And it's a bit like this idea that, you know, about enlightenment being this kind of unattainable, you know, thing way up at the top of Mount Everest and stuff. And yeah, and I think that is a sort of ego tactic that makes it, mm -hmm. it just creates something that like a smoke screen that's not really there. So it just, yeah, it just helps to kind of, I've always felt like it helps to to feel something you know if you want to engage you you can like tune into your body or to tune into something or your breath or whatever rather than just trying to clear your mind is that would you sort of agree with that? oh yes yeah you can never really really clear your mind you're always going to have thoughts yeah. so you might as well um start to get really picky about the thoughts you want to focus yeah. on <laughs> So, do you see it as, because yeah. I've sort of discovered this sort of fairly, you know, in the last few years, like this distinction between thinking a thought, like the thought being from your mind, maybe, 
and receiving a thought where it's coming from like soul or the or the larger your vaster being or Mm -hmm. or the universe or the or the horses or the animals or whatever but it's more like a receiving than a create like like not so much create I don't like to use the word (laughs) creating in that context but like your mind making it up but you do you sort of see that distinction yeah I do and I make a per I'm like an on point purpose to connect to my inner guidance my soul my higher self my guides, however you want to call it, universe. And I actually have an inner guidance journal that I write in every morning. Wow. And I, and I, and I, my intention is always, what should I focus on today? And then I just start free writing and every day it's different. And I'm like, well, this is pretty wild. Whereas, you know, if I'm, you know, like if you're on the computer or doing work and then your mind starts coming up with all these things and I'm like, ah, that's not helping me. So I come back to my heart and I breathe there And then I ask, what do I really need to focus on? So it's like the mind energy and the heart energy is very different to connect to. And then when I'm with the horses, it's so much easier to be in the heart connection because they they open that up. And I I didn't even understand it when I first started teaching. I had clients just start telling me their whole life story and they're opening up to me. And, you know, like I said, when I started teaching, I was in my early 20s and I'm like, this is weird. I should have like majored in psychology. Like I just didn't understand it. And now I get it. It's like the horses open up (laughs) all your emotions and you're like, I'm here. And now I'm here to support people. Like it's totally normal. You know, everything's confidential. We're good. You know, Um, but I want to come back for a second if I could about the, and I, and I, I love this concept. I've been playing with it more. I I see us all as energy and light and strings of light connecting to the universal web. So we can we can like tap into mm. the answers that we need, the energy that we need and connect to the energy we need. And you can see it like strings like almost like on a cello, right? So when your horse comes in front of you either energetically or physically, you can imagine you're you're creating music and you're harmonizing those strings mm. together. That's beautiful. So that, that's just something I've been playing with more. And, and, it, and it feels more magical. And I literally feel like fairy dust is all around us. And that's the reality I create. And some people think it's crazy and laugh yeah. at it. But it's way more fun for me and my pony. So, <laughs> Oh, no, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I just want to share that with you. Because when you're talking about connecting, I'm like, might as well create a fun visual to latch on to as well.